Do you ever just stare at something that you use every day and think, hmm, I wonder where this came from? Well, the answer might just surprise you. I wonder where this tomato came from. As it turns out, some of the things that we use on a regular basis that we're all familiar with did not start out the way that we know and use them today. And some of these things have weird, ridiculous, or straight up awkward histories that are so strange they will shock you. So let's discover what these things are. Here are 10 everyday Everyday items with amazing origins. Number one is the chainsaw. You might be surprised to learn that while our first item is usually used to kill trees, its initial function was to help give life. The chainsaw was first invented around 1830 by Dr. Bernard Heen. A German orthopedist, Dr. Heen created the mechanical tool after constantly seeing complications when assisting female patients while they give birth. This invention, which he originally dubbed the osteotome, had small rotating chain links which carried tiny angled metal teeth perfect for cutting through bone. The original purpose of it was to widen a woman's pelvis in order to make childbirth smoother and easier on the mother. The bone chainsaw, as it was later called, was operated by hand by turning a handle which spun the chain. Later on, this invention was used to remove diseased bone and it wasn't until the 1920s that chainsaws became popular tree clearing machines. And exactly what year did directors decide that the chainsaw was going to become terrifying because it's Jason's weapon of choice. Number two is Listerine. Whenever I'm out of mouthwash, I always turn to my trusty backup liquid, floor cleaner. After all, that's what Listerine used to be. Long before the antiseptic mouthwash product held the slogan, kills germs that cause bad breath, Listerine was used for a number of things that were quite different from what we use them for today. Invented by a Missouri chemist named Joseph Lawrence in 1879, Listerine was originally a powerful surgical antiseptic. It was for this use that the product got its name, and it was Joseph Lister, a pioneer in the field of antiseptic surgery, that Lawrence named it after. Listerine would be go on to be used in the early 1900s as both a floor cleaner and, get this, a cure for gonorrhea. Wait, which one's gonorrhea? Is that the one that hurts when it pees or the itchy one? I'm just glad I don't know. Then, in the 1920s, it became known as a substance that could kill bad breath, and the rest is history. Though, it should be said that having bad breath didn't seem to be that big of a deal until Listerine's print ads claimed that it was. Way to create a problem and solve it, floor cleaning mouthwash! Number three is Silly Putty. Everyone's heard of Silly Putty, that squishy, bouncy, newspaper, print-lifting goop of awesomeness that puts smiles on the faces of millions of kids around the world. But incredibly, this wacky slime owes its creation to the American government. During the Second World War, after Japan invaded a number of countries that produced rubber, a shortage hit the United States. Since they needed the material for everything from rafts to tires to boots, this was a big deal. So, the government hired a bunch of scientists to develop synthetic rubber, one of those scientists being James Wright. Wright found what he thought was the solution by mixing silicone oil and boric acid. The result was silly putty, a substance that actually serves no military military purpose, but kids around the world would eventually come to love. Imagine that! Something that was made to help a war brought fun and smiles to kids' faces instead. It's awesome. Number four is Vaseline. Discovered by Robert Augustus Chesborough at only 22 years old, Vaseline is a petroleum jelly-based product that today has its name on a number of different products from soaps to skin cream. Oh, but in case you didn't know, that clear gunk that you use on your body is actually a byproduct of oil drilling. In 1859, Chesborough met with some oil barons in Titusville, Pennsylvania, who explained a certain obstacle that they'd been dealing with in regards to their oil rig. It turns out that the drills that they were working with were constantly getting gummed up with a waxy substance which they referred to as rod wax. Fascinated by it, Chesborough took a sample of it back to his hometown of Brooklyn, New York to be tested. And 10 years later, this gunk, which Chesborough named Vaseline, was marketed as a healing agent. He toured the United States acting like a masochist as he cut and burned himself to let the medicinal oil do its work. He even claimed to eat a spoonful every day as, according to him, it prolonged his life. Okay, that's just nasty, gunking up your body with that stuff. Leave it on the outside, baby. Number five are graham crackers. 
Oh, the irony of the graham cracker. Who would have thought that the bread replacement on your delicious s'more sandwich was actually invented with the purpose of stopping the good times, uh, so to speak. Sylvester Graham was a Presbyterian minister and dietary reformer who believed it was God's intention for mankind to live a dull life with as few pleasures as possible. So, in accordance with that belief, he lived by the rule that eating only whole wheats ground coarsely at home was allowed. Some of his followers believing in his preachings of minimizing pleasure, invented a cracker that they felt was perfectly in line with these rules as it was without any fun or flavor whatsoever. A plain, dry, crummy cracker that they affectionately named after their ridiculously boring leader. The hope was that the graham cracker would reduce libido and decrease people's sexy fun time. Of course then, the s'more was invented and I'm guessing that they all cried because those things are made of nothing but awesome. Number six is Kotex. Okay, Matt, you're an adult man. You can talk about this. Tampons, okay, nailed it. Believe it or not, Kotex, one of the world's leading brands of feminine hygiene products, didn't start out that way at all. In fact, their parent company started out making bandages for wounded soldiers during World War I. After the war ended on November 11th, 1918, wounds became scarce and thus the need for bandages did as well. This left Kimberly Clark, the company that owns the Kotex brand, with a large excess of cellucotton, the wood pulp fiber used in making the bandages. Then, in 1920, the company came up with a new use for the absorbent material. Developing an alternative to rival Johnson & Johnson's disposable pads, the Kotex brand was born. Number seven is bubble wrap. Ah, bubble wrap, so satisfying to pop. The world became obsessed with doing just that back in the 1960s, but for its popularity, this super satisfying package filler owes just as big a thank you to interior decorators as it does the postal service. That's because bubble wrap started out as 3D wallpaper that lined the walls of a garage in Hawthorne, New Jersey, initially created by sealing two shower curtains together and leaving dozens of air pockets in between, bubble wrap was invented by Alfred Fielding, an engineer, and his partner Mark Chavanis in 1957. At first, the two men considered their invention a failure in decorating with a space-aged motif, as nobody wanted to buy their poppable wallpaper. They then tried selling it as greenhouse insulation, but that didn't sell either. It wasn't until 1960 that the two men founded Sealed Air Corp, and their invention began lining packages instead of their own garage. Nothing more satisfying than bubble wrap, pop. Pop. Number eight is the bra. It's actually a common belief that the bra was invented by a man to make women's breasts look more pleasing or to show off a man's control over women by making them wear something incredibly uncomfortable. But bras were actually invented in 1910 by Mary Phelps Jacob as a way to free her fellow women. Specifically, it was created to replace the incredibly uncomfortable corsets that men had told them to wear, which were insanely popular between the 16th and 19th century. While Mary managed to secure a patent for her invention in 1914, it was actually the first world war that got business booming. As the war created a metal shortage, the corset's days all but came to an end. Even those opposed to wearing the undergarment had little choice but to turn to the bra. So the bra is no symbol of male oppression as millions still believe, but instead in a way is actually a symbol of women's liberation. Number nine is chocolate milk. How we came to be able to enjoy this incredible drink is pretty unreal. Between 1687 and 1688, Irish botanist, naturalist, and collector Sir Hans Sloan became the personal in-house physician to the governor of Jamaica. While traveling through the country, the doctor was given a cocoa drink by the locals that they considered a delicacy. A mixture of cocoa and water, Sloan found it delicious, though he quickly discovered that it did not agree very well with his stomach and he became very nauseous. But not one Wanting to give up on the tasty, tasty beverage, he decided to mix the cocoa with milk instead of water, and presto, chocolate milk was born. Returning with the tasty new beverage to the UK, Sloan actually initially sold it in apothecaries as medicine. Move over, because this is delicious. And number 10 is the automatic transmission. Let's switch gears for a moment for this last one. Back in the 1950s, it was super manly to have a car, and it was especially manly if that car contained as many buttons and gadgets as possible. But driving a car like a man meant driving stick with what we call today a standard or manual transmission. Surprisingly, with automobile manufacturers worried that men would be insulted by offering a car that helped them drive by itself, vehicles with 
automatic transmissions were actually originally marketed towards women. Now back then it was rare for women of the house to make a big decision like buying a car. So when I say they were marketed towards women, I really mean the wives of men. Yeah, the 1950s were super sexist. Ads claiming that men should buy an automatic car for the little lady in their life were pretty common. Some going as far as to claim that women are already so distracted that they need all the help that they can get. Of course, today could literally put a company out of business, but when the automatic transmission was introduced to the market, apparently it became the norm. So those were 10 crazy origins of everyday items. But as always, I want to know from you, is there something else that we use in our everyday lives that started out as something else? Leave your response below because I'll be reading through them and I'm going to pin the best comment to the top. Thank you guys so much for coming by today. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button and remember to come back tomorrow at exactly 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I'll have a brand new video for you. I will see you then. Bye!